This video is about the join operator. This operator joins two example sets together in a variety of ways. Its parameters allow example sets to be enriched with new attributes using data from other sources, also filtered to include only examples of interest, and also combined with other example sets to form subsets or supersets. It's a bit like SQL, the concepts of joining, so we'll cover inner, left, right and outer joins, We'll also look at the ID parameter and double attributes. As usual, I have a process. This looks very complicated. This is just to make life easier when I go through the different parameter settings. So we'll start with this top group, then the middle one, then the bottom one. Basically, each one of these follows the same process, really the same outline. This is a sub-process where some data gets created. This is a multiply operator, this is a multiply operator, and I've labelled it so that we can see what's going on. And I've joined the output of those two multiplies both to the join operator, which is here, and also to this sub-process. By doing it this way, I can set a breakpoint before this operator is executed, and we can examine each of these three flows, so we can actually see the input data, the before and after, because they're multiplied from here, and we can see the join output, which is the middle one. I've arranged also some views up here that will make it all appear neatly on the screen so we can see what's going on. So the first thing we'll look at is this join operator here, and we'll just take the defaults, which is these parameters are remove double attributes, set that to true, and we'll cover that later. Join type set to inner, the choices are inner, left, right, outer. We'll go through these one by one, starting with inner. Use ID as attribute. Well, the input example sets both have an ID attribute, so by default use those as the key to join the data together. And keep both join attributes. Um, I've set that to false, which is the default. So let's just run that. So if I go to this, the join view I created earlier, what you're seeing here is the left example set, the right example set, and the join result. So what you're seeing here is 16 examples in an example set on the left, and there are various IDs chosen from the Iris data set. There's a label, and two of the four regular attributes are selected here, so A2 and A3. The right one, there are five examples with IDs, labels, and A1 to A4. The inner join results in the following output. So it's, there are four examples. So if we examine these IDs one by one closely, because we're joining on the ID, ID 20, well, sure enough, that's in that one, and it's in that one, so that's made it through. And you'll also notice that a1, A2, A3 and A4 have now all been combined into a single example. So the value of A1 and A4 have come from the right, A2 and A3 have come from the left. And we could work down that, 78 is there, 83, 94. So ID underscore 30 is obviously not in the left view. Um, and 78, 83, 94, if we look, 78, yes, they're all in the left here. So basically, the inner join between these two example sets is this. So far, so good. Let's change the join type to be left join. I'll run it again. Now we see that the, the left-hand side essentially takes precedence. So every example in the example set on the left has made it through to the result. And there are 16. And you can see A2 and A3 in general, that's always filled in. Where there is data in on the right, as you saw before, when the inner join happened, there are 1, 2, 3, 4. So those four examples have made it through to the final result. And A1, A4 are known and are filled in as well. Where A1 and A4 aren't known, because there's no data on the right, a question mark signifies missing. So again, so far so good. Let's look at right join this time. Run it again. Now what we're seeing is, this time, the right-hand side, all of the examples in the right have made it through to the result. So this time, A1 and A4 from the right have always made it and the four examples on the left 
their A2 and A3 values have made it as well but clearly now the label um, A2 and A3 have not made it. Now you may ask why has the label not made it? It's a good question why there is no label. I would expect it actually to come from the right hand side but that's just the way it works so unfortunately there's nothing I can do about that so we have to live with it. Final one let's look at the outer join. Again run that again So this time there are 17 examples in the example set in the output and that's the superset really of 16 and 5 and there were 4 at common therefore there's one that isn't shared between them that appears as ID 30 here. So again the same question mark over the label, we have to live with that. But you can sort of satisfy yourself that each of these values A1, A2, A3, A4 has come from somewhere and in general speaking the, the outer join represents the superset of it with perhaps a question mark over that. Anyway, so that's the first set of examples looked at. Now we'll look at this middle section. So what we'll do, we'll set a breakpoint before here. So it's the same approach we've got. This time we're going to have 150 examples in the left, one, one example on the right. And what we'll do is we're going to look at the key attributes parameter here which you get when you deselect use ID attribute as key. What you have to do then is choose your attributes. What I've done is I've chosen both cluster and label and you'll see that it essentially allows you to choose the attribute you're interested in and you can select it from a drop down which is good and okay so let's run this and look at a slightly different view here we go so on the left here we have 150 examples, this is the Iris data set. I've added a cluster attribute, I've done a K means clustering on it for those that are interested. And with K equal to 3, so there should be 3 clusters in this. And if I scroll down cluster 1, cluster 0, you saw there cluster 2, so there are 3 clusters. On the right I've got a very small example set with one row, one example, with the label set to Iris Virginica and the cluster set to cluster 0. By using that as an inner join with the compound key I set up, we get the following result. We get 36 examples and we get attributes from the combined set. And so there are, what this means is there are 36 examples where label and cluster are equal to those values here. So this is a, an illustration really of how to do, let's call it filtering or selection um, with compound keys, which can be very useful from time to time. Okay, let's go back to the design view. So this is the final one. So I'll just clear up everything and I'll set a breakpoint before. This one, I'm going to f play around with the remove double attributes and keep both join attributes. In this situation, I've got two 150 example example sets. The left view is essentially the, um, the raw 150 data points for the Iris data set. The right view is 150 data points with the cluster that each has been assigned to and the cluster prototype or the cluster centroids for each of the four attributes. If we examine the data you'll see what I mean. And then what I'm doing is I'm then using I'm using the key attribute of ID. So there's no compound key. And I'm not removing double attributes and I'm keeping both join attributes. So we should, the best way to see what's going on is to run it, so I'll do that. And if I go to this view here, so this time we're seeing on the left 150 examples where this is the raw data, so you see A1, A1 to A4 and an ID and a label. On the right a clustering has been performed and I've and I've filled in the cluster prototype for that cluster. So it's essentially repeating the same data time and time again. If I scroll down we find cluster 0 is a different set of values for the attributes. If I join that together we actually get um, a very big example set because I'm not removing any doubles. So not only is the ID doubled up as you can see here, so ID is here. ID from example set 2 is how to translate that. So, you, fairly pointless thing to do, but anyway, it's there if you need to do it. And you can see the result, because it's joined on ID, 
let's just see if we can see it all from first principles so we see ID 1 we should get 5.1 3 yep there they are and we can see this row here yep five those so those match and you can see that the attributes have been called something like a1 from example set 2 on the right hand side is supposed to be a better way to think of it now I'm not saying this will be something you might do this exact thing but it's illustrative of the general point if you really want to see um, attributes combined you can actually keep them so that they appear in the final joined example set uh, one important point if you if we go back to the parameters here keep it you keeping both join attributes will only work if the attributes are not special attributes so you have to uh, explicitly set the ID that you want to join to be regular in order for that to work That's a subtle point um, and I think the same applies to the remove double attributes if you unselect that and you are getting double attributes if any of them is a special attribute I suspect you may find that some may not show up as you expect just a little point to watch okay so I'll just run this one more time and leave the uh, example set up so that you can see do a manual compare at your leisure